Welcome to our Science and Technology Briefing program. Today, we have some exciting news from the world of ride sharing. Uber is making waves in Japan by connecting local taxi drivers with foreign tourists through their app, aiming to enhance earnings for drivers while catering to the rising demand for rides as tourism rebounds post pandemic. With over 200 taxi companies on board, this initiative is set to transform the way people navigate the streets of Japan. In the gaming world, the upcoming release of Life is Strange, Double Exposure is stirring up controversy. Developers are facing backlash over plot decisions, particularly from fans who are unhappy with the direction of beloved characters. Despite the criticism, the creators stand firm on the importance of addressing political and social issues within the game, emphasizing that these themes are integral to its identity. Finally, comedian Tony Hinchcliffe has found himself in hot water after making racist jokes at a Trump rally drawing ire from public figures like AOC and Ricky Martin. While Hinchcliffe defends his humor, the backlash highlights the ongoing debate about the limits of comedy in today's social climate. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage on these intriguing stories. Nikkei Asia reports that Uber is eager to enhance the earnings of Japanese taxi drivers by linking them with foreign tourists. Dominic Taylor, the regional general manager for mobility in Asia, emphasized that Uber offers a familiar experience for tourists arriving in Japan, as they can use the same app they are accustomed to in their home countries. With Japan experiencing a surge in inbound tourism post-pandemic, driven by a weaker yen and the global popularity of Japanese pop culture, the demand for transportation is rising. However, the country faces a shortage of drivers, particularly in rural areas where local transport is struggling due to an aging population. Despite the taxi industry's hesitation towards deregulation due to fears of job losses and safety concerns, the government has recently legalized limited ride-hailing services, which Uber aims to capitalize on by partnering with over 200 taxi companies and transitioning from street-hailing to app-based requests. South China Morning Post highlights the upcoming release of Life is Strange, Double Exposure, a video game that continues to push the boundaries of representation with LGBTQ central characters. The game, set to launch just before the contentious U.S. elections, has faced backlash, particularly from figures like Elon Musk, who criticized the inclusion of diverse characters in gaming. However, the developers, Deck 9 Games, stand firm in their mission to embrace diversity and tackle social issues within their narratives. The return of the beloved character Max has sparked mixed reactions among fans, with some expressing feelings of betrayal over the direction of the story. Despite the criticism, co-creator Michelle Koch urged fans to refrain from hateful messages and to recognize that disappointment in narrative choices does not justify harassment of the creators. South China Morning Post also covers the controversy surrounding comedian Tony Hinchcliffe, who drew significant attention for his racist jokes at a recent Trump rally. His remarks, which included derogatory comments about Puerto Rico and other marginalized groups, sparked outrage from public figures, including Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ricky Martin. Despite the backlash, Hinchcliffe, known for his roast comedy style and connections to prominent figures like Joe Rogan, dismissed the criticism, arguing that comedians should not apologize for their jokes. This incident follows a pattern of controversy for Hinchcliffe, who previously faced backlash for using a racial slur in 2021. As he continues to defend his comedic approach, reactions from politicians and celebrities underscore the deep cultural divides surrounding humor and race in today's political climate. South China Morning Post, Sierra, the AI startup co-founded by Brett Taylor, former co-CEO of Salesforce, has recently achieved a staggering US$4.5 billion US dollar valuation after raising US$175 million US dollars in a funding round led by Greenoaks Capital. This comes just a year after its launch, marking a significant leap from its previous valuation of nearly US$1 billion. US dollars. With annualized revenues surpassing US$20 million, US dollars, Sierra specializes in AI-powered customer service chatbots, serving major clients like Weight Watchers and SiriusXM. The company aims to distinguish itself by tackling the issue of hallucinations in AI, ensuring that brands can rely on accurate interactions with customers. Taylor, who has a rich history in Silicon Valley and serves as chairman of OpenAI, has attracted considerable investor interest reflecting a broader trend of high valuations in the AI sector despite concerns about potential market bubbles. New York Times, the landscape of foreign interference in U.S. elections has evolved dramatically since the 2016 presidential election, with Russia, China, and Iran employing increasingly sophisticated disinformation tactics. 
U.S. intelligence officials have noted that these countries are not only attempting to sway public opinion but are also focused on undermining trust in American democracy. For instance, while Russia seeks to bolster Donald Trump's candidacy, Iran prefers Kamala Harris, demonstrating the targeted nature of these operations. The disinformation campaigns have adapted to leverage social media's reach, aiming to amplify divisions among Americans. The impact of these efforts could be significant in a tightly contested presidential race, with the potential to influence public perception and voter behavior through cleverly crafted narratives that resonate with specific audiences. Foreign Affairs The ongoing covert war for the minds of American voters is highlighted by recent charges against employees of the Russian state media outlet RT for money laundering related to a Tennessee based media startup. This case underscores the persistent threat posed by foreign adversaries like Russia, China, and Iran, who continue to exploit disinformation to sow chaos and division within the U.S. political landscape. Despite some measures taken by the U.S. government to counter these operations, the response has often been fragmented and inadequate. Experts argue for a comprehensive strategy that includes better coordination among government agencies and collaboration with social media platforms to combat the spread of harmful narratives. Additionally, there is a call for the U.S. to proactively engage in its own influence operations, reminiscent of Cold War strategies, to counter the narrative warfare being waged by its adversaries. The Independent reports that Donald Trump has vehemently denied accusations of being a fascist, claiming at a rally in Atlanta that he is the opposite of a Nazi. This statement comes amidst criticism from former aides, including John Kelly and Mark Milley, who have labeled Trump as fitting the definition of fascism. Kelly's warning, supported by a letter from 13 former White House officials, highlights the gravity of the situation, suggesting that certain historical moments require placing the country above party loyalty. Furthermore, Trump's recent rhetoric has intensified, as he has called out the enemy within and hinted at using military force against his political adversaries. The atmosphere at his rallies has been charged, with derogatory remarks aimed at Kamala Harris, drawing comparisons to a pro-Hitler rally from 1939. In another rally, Trump took aim at Michelle Obama, suggesting she made a big mistake by being nasty toward him, referencing her recent criticisms of his leadership and mental fitness. His comments were met with boos from the crowd, and he attempted to downplay his own history of disparaging remarks about her husband, Barack Obama. Trump's response to Michelle's accusations of his gross incompetence and erratic behavior reflects a broader campaign strategy where both he and Kamala Harris are actively rallying support. As the election approaches, both camps are intensifying their efforts, with Harris receiving support from prominent figures like Barack Obama and Bruce Springsteen, while Trump continues to galvanize his base with provocative rhetoric and confrontational tactics. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.